right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Success with Bob Mwiti Show. And today I'm at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. And I'm with a young guy here. Uh, he's, uh, he's Kenyan. And we met uh, sometimes back when he had dropped uh, Wilfred to our home, when Wilfred came to us uh, uh, for summer vacation. And uh, I met him, a very brilliant guy. And uh, I decided today, since we are here, we've been here at the uh, University of Alabama in Huntsville for the last three, four days, uh, you know, formalizing our collaboration between us, the Kenya Airlift program, and the school. So today we are leaving, we've done everything that we needed to do. We have a lot of content, by the way, that we'll be sharing out there. And uh, today I decided, let me have a conversation with this young gentleman so that he can give you some information about, you know, studying here at this school and for whatever courses that he's doing. So thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bob. So can you tell our audience, like, who are you, you know, where are you from in Kenya, you know, and all that stuff. And where did, where did you go to school and what do you do here? All right. Thank you so much, Bob. Uh, mm -hmm. My name is Jose Amai. Mm -hmm. uh, I live here in Huntsville, Alabama. Mm -hmm. I've uh, been here for years now. Mm -hmm. I come from Nandi County, mm -hmm. Mossop constituency, mm -hmm. and uh, Kabisaga location is where I come from. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm privileged to talk to you today. Uh, no uh, I go to school here at the Great University of Alabama in Huntsville, uh -huh. where I'm currently pursuing my PhD in mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. I did my master's program here and then proceeded to also get started with a PhD. And, uh -huh. Yeah. It's going on well so far. Good. So, question. Are you the only Kenyan together with Wilfred or the other Kenyans in the school? So, as far as being Kenyan, and by being Kenyan, I mean those who grew up in Kenya and coming here when they are, I mean, older and mature in life. Yes, yeah. we are the only two students currently at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. Uh -huh. Before uh, Wilfred came, I, I was the only one for a couple of years. I have met a few who have Kenyan names, but they were born and raised here. Yeah, so the only thing they have is a Kenyan name, and they don't know much about Kenya. But they are Kenyans at the end of the day. Ah, okay. Yeah. So tell our audience, how is the school life here? Like, you know, being a PhD, what, is, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Okay. In a normal, uh, regular, you know, semester. All right, thank you very much. Um, so to go back a bit, mm -hmm. uh, when I started my master's here, it was a bit different. I think I had more free time, I had less courses to take, and there was less expectation as far as what I needed to study is concerned. I'll say for sure it's a bit different when you're coming from the Kenyan system to the system that we do here, but at the master's level, I would say it's a lot easier to adapt and to get into it. For any working Kenyan out there, there's nothing that you cannot do in this country. You just need to put in the effort and do what is expected. That one is now coming to a PhD program, it's that's a different plate altogether. Mm -hmm. I thought I had it figured out before coming in, mm -hmm. but a few months into I realized that it was a bit hard. Mm -hmm. So what a typical day for me looks like, uh, so unlike other countries where you get started with a coursework, you have to finish a coursework before you know proceeding to the next level of your PhD program. Mm -hmm. The PhD in engineering, in engineering in the United States is a bit different. Mm -hmm. More or less, you have to do like a minimum number of courses mm -hmm. or credits, as they call it here, before you know progressing to go deeply into your research. Yeah. So first, um, I needed to do some courses initially. Some of them I had taken in my master's program, which counted the PhD program. But at the same time, I needed to get started on my research because that's also what I'm going to be evaluated on. Yeah. So typically, I have to like, I had to attend classes initially. Currently, I don't take them anymore, mm -hmm. but I'm not yet done with classes. So I'll have to finish like two courses that I'm left with at some point. Mm -hmm. So currently, I am focusing on my research. Mm -hmm. uh, my research is focused on uh, batteries, sodium ion batteries here. And we are looking at coming up with you know newer technologies for hybrid and electric vehicles. So that's what my research is focused on at the moment. So I spend almost like the better days uh, or the better part of my day at the lab. And on the other time when I'm not at the lab, I'm probably studying just to get new ideas and few other things that is school related. Ah, fantastic. Yeah. So how long does it take for you to complete a PhD program? Like you are using the PhD in Yes, PhD mechanical engineering. Uh -huh. Typically, 
it takes about five years to get done with a PhD in engineering in the Wait. United States. What? Yes, it takes about five years to get done. Really? Now, it can be longer. You are allowed seven years and you can shorten it. And I'm working on shortening mine. I should be able to take somewhere between three and a half to like four years. How wow. to do that is, so you have to be strategic about it. When I was doing my master's here and I knew I may potentially go to a PhD, I started doing some of the requirements that would be expected of me at the PhD level when I was working on my master's so that I can cut on the time. So I did a lot more classes, I tried to do a lot more research. Much as my research topic changed along the way for other reasons, good reasons, uh, I had done a lot. So I'm trying on cutting down my time and I think I'm on track to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'll take anywhere between three and a half to four years to get done with everything. Wow, that's good. I didn't know about that. Yeah. You're watching Success with Bob Witty Show presented to you by AppStack America. AppStack America is a consulting company that helps immigrants find amazing higher education and job opportunities in the tech industry in the United States. You can find our programs by going to www.appstackamerica.com. AppStack America, we wake you up to the unlimited potential within you. For you to join a PhD program, do yeah. you have to take those uh, entrance exams like GMA, GRE? Yes, so for my case, mm -hmm. uh, so I did a GRE just before the start of my master's program mm -hmm. and thankfully the score was good Still enough active. to be able to use it yeah. uh, for master's and PhD at the same time. So uh, that's what I did. Oh, okay. yeah. so it, it's needed? Yes, it is a requirement and it's a requirement because for PhD, uh, if you are looking at scholarships, then you have to have like a really good GRE score yeah. and a few other things that are your selling point. Yeah. What do you have to show for it? How can you convince these people to fund your program? Because what I have is a fully funded program including you know, something to take home at the end of the day. So that's what I would challenge anyone to go for. It makes your life easier and you can focus on your studies and research. Good. Yeah. So for the GRE, what did you score yourself? Oh, uh, well, I had like... Um, so because I was going into engineering and all that, I really had to work hard on my math. Mm -hmm. I think for the math section I had 160 something, I think it's about 170, yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. well. Yes, and my English was not so good, even you can tell from my speaking. But yeah, I needed something decent also for the English program because at the end of the day they look at the, the overall point. Yeah, but they were more focused on what do you score in math because you're going into an engineering program. Yeah. Yeah, wow, fantastic. Yeah. Now, you've talked about scholarships and all, right? Yeah. Can you tell us, how are you funded? So, um, one of the, I would say, the hardest yet the easiest ways to get funded is, mm -hmm. so you have to identify a program that you want to join. Mm -hmm. Then look for the schools that offer that program. Mm -hmm. Once you get the school, go to the respective department where the program is offered, mm -hmm look for you know a faculty member let's say a professor who does research in an area that you are interested in yeah. once you've identified the professor make contact with them tell them i am so and so i have this background you know in my studies and everything and i want to go into research in this area and that i have identified your lab and the things that you do and they are of interest to me and this is what i'm likely to bring on board if they like you, they will engage you, and that's how I, uh, I got my scholarship because I joined a specific research lab which already has funds. They are funded by the National Science Foundation, Foundation National yeah. Institute of Health, and all that. Remember, it's like the National Science Foundation. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. Because the professor wrote a grant and he got a lot of funds, he has to bring on researchers on board that can work with him. Mm. A team of like minded, you know hard-working people that can deliver the results because at the end of the day the guys giving the grant they expect the results to be yeah, delivered yeah, yeah. yeah so i am indirectly funded by the national science foundation but through my professor who wrote the grant wow and so talking of funding yes uh when we are engaging the, the administrators of the school during yeah. our ceremony for signing the agreement yes you are telling us that you guys are one of the highly funded institutions in the u.s and it was like it was like, yeah, we even funded more than the University of South Florida, which, had, which has like around 60,000 students. Yes. And this school has only 10. Yeah. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. 
Yeah, that's one unique thing about the UAH that uh, it, it specialized in specific courses for a very long time and that's what happens when you go for quality. Yeah. And when people see delivery, they are likely to support you and yeah. things like that. Yeah. And for so many years, it has been receiving. I remember one time, an interesting thing in the Department of Biology, for anyone who has a background in biology, you may look at the department. They had, I think, a lot more funds than they were qualified people to make use of the opportunity. It's yeah. one of the really well-funded Departments yeah. at the moment. Yeah, and yes, uh, so. talking of funding, uh, we've already uh, signed the agreement with the University of Alabama in Huntsville, and actually, you know, they've told us that there's so many opportunities for PhD students uh, in terms of funding, and uh, so we're going to be opening up our Kenya Airlift program to PhD students because there's a lot of opportunities for full graduate assistantship awards and research awards. Okay. So, much, so many of them, they told us as PhD students, it's very, very hard for you not to be funded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are opening up the Kenya Airlift program to, you know, PhD students. If you want to study anything related to STEM, engineering, science, physics, mathematics, all that stuff, you can definitely get into our program. Okay, and we're going to get you funded here at uh, University of Alabama in Huntsville. Now, also talking about um, awards, right? Yep. There's something called stipend that you get at the end of the month. Right. What is it about? Tell yeah. us, how, how much is it and how much does it cover for your living expenses? Yes, so basically what a spy, uh, stipend looks like is uh, it's meant to make the life of a student comfortable. Mm -hmm. It should be able to take care of your, you know, your rent, food, you know, for just a decent student living. And, uh, I don't know how they calculate it, but I would say for a fact that it is enough to make a living. So there's also an amount, you know, they put it as a amount that is, you know, fixed and all that. Yeah. It should also be enough to go into your books. Mm. So when you get like a full scholarship complete with a stipend, you are good to go. You yeah, don't have you to worry about anything else. You, you just need to wake nothing. up, go to yeah. that lab, go to that class and do and, what you and need do, to do. And, and do your work. Yeah, and uh, it's different because there are two forms, I would say, that are quite easy to go for for anyone listening. Uh -huh. Either you can go for teaching assistantship, which yeah. is the easiest to get because it's offered by the department or the school budget in general. Then there is the research assistantship, like the one I am on currently. And that one is from a research grant that has been given to a particular faculty member. The research grant definitely, it's, bitter, uh, it's bigger, it's better and all that, but then, you know, they might be few and they are a lot more competitive. Okay. But yeah, it's enough to make a very comfortable living until there's something to send home, I mean, we're oh. Kenyans. <laughs> all right, I think yeah. uh, that's pretty much it. It's very, very hot here. Yes, you can uh, see we, we are, are really we are burning like crazy. <laughs> so we're going to yes. end this conversation here. Yeah. Maybe when uh, Josea comes back to Tampa, you might have some more interviews and you no can problem. explain a little bit more about what he does, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. So there's a lot more that you can get from him. But for now, bye. You've been watching Success with Bomweti Show brought to you by Upstack America. Come back next time to hear more steps and missteps that I took on the path to becoming a successful immigrant in USA. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn.